טוב, באסר דף פה עמוד א' ועמוד ב', controlling your space, כלב שלוקח ברשות מוכר. As I mentioned, the whole week's matmonim has been sponsored by David and Hannah Wallace, so thank you to them and for their participation. This piece of Gemara is really interesting, and there are people who like to make or tend to make a machlokis between the Rashbam and Tosfus on this particular piece of Gemara and see them as learning it very differently. And I'm not going to go into their way of learning it, because if you see where the Rashbam bases himself and you see where Tosfus bases himself, and you see they're both based on a Rimi Gash, and you make the Rimi Gash the focus of your understanding of this piece of Gomorrah, then you realize that this is all one consisted approach to the piece of Gomorrah. What does the Gomorrah say? At the beginning of Pei Hei Amad Aleph, the beginning of the Daf, Rabbi Avo teaches us a comment of his Rebbe, Rabbi Yechano, that Kelav shel Adam kone lo b'chol makom sheyesh lo reshut l'hanicho. We're talking about Kinyanim, how to acquire the, the moment of execution of a contract. A agrees to sell something to B. At what point is the sale complete and irreversible? And that's the moment of Kinyan. One of the methods of Kinyan, says Rabbi Yochanan, is Kelav Shel Adam. So if I'm buying the golden Rolex from you, and I bring my briefcase and I open it up because my briefcase is full of the cash that you're going to need to receive for the golden Rolex, I take the cash out of my briefcase, and you put the golden Rolex into my briefcase. From that moment, my briefcase has made the Kinyan. The fact I haven't touched it. I haven't done a hagba, I haven't lifted it up, I haven't, I, I, I've done nothing with it. I haven't touched the golden Rolex yet. It's just in my briefcase. That's enough to make it mine, provided that, provided my briefcase is in a place where I'm permitted to put it. And it's that reshut l'hanicho that is important. We had a shir not long ago in Bovim on the word reshut. And that reshut has a double meaning. Reshut means a territory, a, a piece of uh, possession, it means you have possession over something, it's a piece of property. Rishut uh, Rishutarabim, two different kind of areas, the public domain, the private domain, we use the word Rishut, but Rishut also means permission. And we spoke about the linkage of those two words, the meaning of the, those two meanings of the word Rishut. Uh, and that, in fact, Rishut Ayachid is a place where an individual has to grant you permission of entry. Whereas Rishut Sarabim, the community has to grant you permission of entry. So Rishut is about control of, a, of, a ter- of territory. And so here, too, we, the whole piece of Gemara, our whole shir today is, is around this word Rishut. Bechol makom sheyesh lo Rishut lahanicho. That you, you, the briefcase has to be in a place where you have permission to be, where you're entitled to be. The Rambam paskins that lahalacha and says kivan she nichlesu am betaltelim betocha kli ein echad meim yachol lachzor bo. Once the golden Rolex is in the briefcase, neither party can retract um, unilaterally. The contract has been executed. Ask the Gemara on the next page on Pehei on Bebeis. Bo minei Rav Sheshis. Rav Sheshis asks the question. Mi Rav Huna from Rav Huna. Kelav shelokach birushut mocher. What happens if this transaction took place at, in your office? It wasn't in my home. You didn't come to me with a golden Rolex and to, to collect the cash. I came to you, to your shop, to your store, to your office, or to your house. And it was in your territory that you put the golden Rolex into my briefcase. Can that work as well or not? Ask the Gemara. Can I look at or not? Can the look at buy? When, yes, the object, the golden Rolex is in my briefcase, but my briefcase is in your territory. Does this kind of Kenyan that we talk about on Ahmed Aleph, does this kind of Kenyan still work? The Rashbam explains, Look at that word, Ki'ilu. Says the, the Rashbam, he hasn't really given it into my Rashut, again, using the bigger idea of Rashut. Rashut meaning that area of territory over which I have control, over which I have to give permission of entry. So the, the, the Rashbam doesn't say, Can I look here because Natan letoch Rashuto shall look here. He put it in my briefcase and my briefcase is my Rashut. No, my briefcase is not my Rashut because it's in your, in, at this moment, it's in your house, it's in your office. So it's in your Rashut, which means my, the golden Rolex is also in your Rashut. But it's Ki'ilu. It's as if it's in my Rashut. In other words, it's a symbolic transfer of ownership. It's a symbolic 
transfer of the of the Rolex from your possession to my possession? Or do we say, Lo kanadi rishuti karo? Do we say, no, this is not about ki'ilus. This is not about symbolic kinyan. The main thing is rishut ikar, who has access, who controls access. Vakli batil legabi rishut. And the, the briefcase is in your office. You can kick me out of the office at any moment. So how can you call this my reshut? This is, this is not my reshut. So we have to look at the Rimigash, because this is the, where, where it all starts. Where, where does the Rashbam get this parish from? It's based on the Rimigash. For example, the buyer comes with a measuring container. It's a container that measures volume, and he brings it into the seller's store or house. But it's in the office or the house or the store of the seller. So I'm pouring, you bring this empty container, which is, which is so that we can measure how much volume. I pour into your container. It's still in my reshut. So now you've got your container full of my product. And we've agreed to make a sale. At that moment, whose product is it? Do we say it's kanal or ki'ilu? And here you see these very words that the Rashbam uses. Ki'ilu natan letoch rushuto. It's as if he put it into his rushus. Ki'man dahavi bekelav. Because it's in his, in, in his kli, it's in his briefcase. Or lo kanal o ke'ach, de rushut ikar. Fa kli batel hu legabi ha rushut. Almost the words of the Rashbam. Will a haki buy kone lokeach, and therefore maybe the lokeach should buy? Asks the Rimi Gash a question which Tosfus and other Rishonim ask. But we know already from Ahmed Aleph, we know Va'afa gav de Bereshus Arabim loikani kelav de lokeach. We know in the public domain, my briefcase can't work to be kone. So if you and I meet in the public park, in the public square, and I take the cash out of my briefcase because it's in Ranana where it's very safe. I can take, open my briefcase and I can give you cash. I wouldn't do it in Times Square in New York, but I can do it in Ranana. So I give you the cash. You put the golden Rolex in my briefcase. I close the briefcase. And at that point, I have charot and I want, to, I want to back out of the deal. Can I do that or not? At that point, is it mine or not? So we say, no, you're in Rishus Harabim. In Rishus Harabim, it definitely doesn't work. In Rishus Harabim, where we both have some rights of access, because it's public property, you're allowed to be there and I'm allowed to be there. It's not any more yours than it's mine. We know that it doesn't work, that my briefcase will not serve as, a, as a, being able to be coined as an act of acquisition. Why should it work if I'm in your office? It doesn't work in public domain. Why would it work in your office? Answers the Rimi Gash, Mishum Dein Rishut Lo Lanichosham. That's because in the public domain, I don't have the right to put to, to be to put my briefcase there. As Tosfus says, who's going to give me permission? The public are going backwards and forwards. They don't want me leaving my briefcase standing in the middle of the of the public domain. They'll tell me to move out of the way, and the and and there's nobody to negotiate with. Who owns it? It's the community. And therefore, I have no right to, to be there. It's not just that at this moment, my, where my briefcase is and is it allowed to be there. It's do I have the right to be there? I don't have the right to be there, therefore it's not my rishus. But if I'm in your property, if I'm in your office, since I've come in here with your permission, I've come here to buy, you're measuring out the commodity into my kli, into my utensil, or you're busy putting the Rolex into my briefcase, and this is all by arrangement. Makom kelav maknile. Clearly, you've given me the rights of usage of your property for that transaction. When I put my briefcase down on your desk, you're allowing me to do that, which means you're lending me the right to use your desk. And that's better than Rishu Sarabin. You can't do that in Rishu Sarabin. In public domain, you can't lend me the rights to be there. It doesn't belong to you. Nobody can give me the rights to be there other than to use it for, for moving from one place to another. But to put my suitcase down, nobody can give me the rights. But in your territory, you can give me the rights to put the suitcase down. And therefore, there's a possibility that even though we know that in the public domain, my briefcase cannot serve as my territory, in your office, my briefcase could serve as my territory because you've given me the rights to put my briefcase down there and accept and collect the Rolex that you've sold to me.
if you learn Tosfus based on the on the Rimi Gash, you get a you understand that Tosfus is, is built on exactly the same Rimi Gash. He asks the same question. That's because the public community doesn't want people leaving their suitcases and, and barrels and, and, and objects there for, for purposes of commerce. Deman pious deman or deman shavik. Who's going to be who are you going to negotiate with and who's going to give you a license? To put that there, you don't have the right. Even though at the top we learned that Rabbi Yochanan says it, it works only if you have permission to be there. That means it can't be Rishus Arabim. But Rabbi Yochanan didn't mean it can't be in the office of the seller. Because he might well have been giving him that territory. So that's why I've, I've, I learned differently from those who want to learn that there's a machlokis, Rashbam and, and Tosfus. Uh, to me, it seems clear that both the Rashbam and Tosfus are rooted in the Rimi Gash, and the Rimi Gash is the, is the underlying principle of the, of the whole sugya. On the next page, I, I mentioned the Machne Ephraim, which we might have an opportunity to explore more detail tomorrow where the Machne Ephraim explains a principle which links to something we learned throughout Bova Metzi and all the Kinyonim we did. We talked about a Kinyon being an, a matter of Shlita, of showing control over an object. And that control has to move from seller to buyer. And the Machne Ephraim says that you possibly need both. The briefcase has to be mine and the territory has to be mine. Because part of a kinyan is not just that the buyer takes possession, it's that he removes it from the possession of the seller. There are two parts to a kinyan. There's got to be the removal from the seller and the reception of the, of the buyer. But if the object is either in the seller's briefcase or in the seller's office, it can't be considered as completely having moved out of the reshut of the mocher. And early this morning, I was um, reflecting on this piece of Gemara and on this Machne Ephraim, on the whole idea of reshut. And it struck me, and I was partially what was going through my mind. Norman was about a conversation that you and I had a few days ago about certain wonderful, very from Yerushalayim people in the broader Jewish community who don't think that having a state is that important. Uh, Eretz Israel is its own independent Kedusha. Whether we have a state or we don't have a state doesn't really make a difference. And uh, if, if there are too many people being killed for the purpose of a state, maybe we shouldn't have a state. There are people, as you know, uh, very serious people who, who have that viewpoint. And I'm not debating that viewpoint, but that was going through my mind when I suddenly realized that today is the fifth anniversary of Amber and my Aliyah to Eretz Israel. It was exactly today, five years ago. And I was asking myself, had I known what was going to, the next five years were going to look like? Had I known about COVID and about the war? How willing would I have been to come? And my answer to myself was even more willing. It would have been absolutely, it wasn't a question five years ago, but it would have been even, even less of a question. And why? Because I was thinking of the Machne Ephraim. The Machne Ephraim is Rabbi Ephraim Navon. I don't know if he was related to the former president of the, of the State of Israel, but there was a chief rabbi in Avon in the 19th century, and he was uh, his great-grandson. He was born in Istanbul, in Constantinople, and came in Aliyah, as we all did. And he came, but under different circumstances. There was no nefesh benefesh, there was no misrada klita, there, was no, there were no benefits. He came to Yerushalayim with nothing, and Yerushalayim was, was desperate. There was no money in Yerushalayim, there was no income, and he sat quietly and learnt. And Israel was under Ottoman occupation at the time. And the Ottomans made it so uncomfortable for people to live in Yerushalayim that little by little people left Yerushalayim. Some went to Tzfat and some emigrated, went overseas again. And, and he was the last... Author, halakhic authority left in Yerushalayim. I've spoken to you before that when the Rav Mibar Tanura came to Yerushalayim, uh, that they, they couldn't even find a Sefer Torah. There, was, there weren't minyonim. There was nothing in Yerushalayim. He was the last at that time, the last Pesach in Yerushalayim, and he stayed and stayed and stayed until he couldn't. And he went back to Istanbul. And there he had a very successful period of time. In, in, in Istanbul, they persuaded him to stay there and to establish yeshivas and become the Rav, which he did. He had a successful time there. But I was thinking to myself, Rishus, access, 
the fact that we have a little space which is Eretz Yisrael, which Hashem has given us access to once again after, after 2,000 years, Rebbe Nishlam has given us access. And we realize with what's going on in the world, we don't have free access anywhere else. That access could be cut off in a moment. Access to the United States, and we see even, even citizens of the United States, access to go to your classes at university, and you've got people who block your access? What is that? That means it's not your home. That, that's, you, if you don't have access, you don't have control, it's not yours. And Baruch Hashem, we've been given control. If God forbid we were to lose control of Eretz Israel, it wouldn't be because of America or Iraq or Iran or Hezbollah or nobody's going to take it away from us. The only people who can damage our own control of Eretz Israel is ourselves. We can lose control. That's, that's ours to keep or ours to lose, depending on how we behave and the choices and the decisions that, that we make, not just the military and political decisions, the moral and ethical and religious decisions we make. It's ours to hold. It's a precious to understand. Yes, Eretz Yisrael has Kedusha, whether or not we have a state. Uh, you can own your golden, golden Rolex wherever it is, but the fact is, if you don't have Rishus, if you don't have free access to your object, you don't have full ownership of your object, because that's what Rishus means. And having access, having the freedom to come in and out of Eretz Yisrael, look what happens when all of a sudden all the airlines stop coming, except the, the airline of, of Eretz Yisrael. We can still travel in and out, even at moments of war, not for a moment has it been impossible for us to come home and to, to go away from home if we need to and come back to home, that's Rishus. That's having permission, our own permission, to be able to have access, a very, very important element of the gift that the Rebbein Shalom has given us, uh, the gift that, uh, that we celebrate for, for the last five years ourselves, our family, and uh, a gift that we must treasure and preserve and protect with all our might as we go forward.